Well, it's hello and welcome once again to the programme. My name is Tommy Sands and I hope you have the time, taste and temperament to stay with me for the next while. And while away, a while of an evening or day or night, whatever it is, wherever you are and whenever you are. I, a wonderful group of musicians with us tonight. I suppose you could say their music is steeped in the river Bine. It rises out of Tara Hills. A lot of it is original and I know you're going to enjoy it. This first piece of music you're going to hear is actually recorded on Tara Hill. It's called Summer Solstice in the Tara Cheek.
There you heard Summer Solstice. Summer Solstice is the name of the, 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 the piece, uh, and the Tara Jig, the name of the, the jig, we'll say. Mm -hmm. yeah. Harry Long, I've known you for a long time, s since we were both children in short trousers, <laughs> uh, <laughs> down around Tin Vane, the home mm -hmm. of the, the Clancy brothers and so mm -hmm. on. And uh, you, you're, you're related to them and uh, through... That's right, yeah. Yeah. Uh, through yeah, my marriage. Uncle, yeah, my uncle Sean was married to Cot Clancy, who yes. was a sister of the, the famous brothers. That's right. So you grew up and uh, were very much part of that uh, sense of music around the place. Cos mm -hmm. Khan, uh, introduce us to the lads here for a start. Well, this is David, who plays the baron and the keyboards. David. Oh, Tommy. Good to see you. Yeah. Jerry plays the fiddle and sometimes you, a bit of whistle and accordion as well. Yeah. And John plays guitar and sings. John is, you were telling me a story, John. It uh, was, that's a long time ago. It, it is a long time ago. Remember. <laughs> About a, a man arriving on a horse one time. A lady, actually. A lady? Yeah. Well, she was supposed to be a lady. When we were younger, we lived beside uh, a big estate. And, uh, this is in County Mead. This is in County Mead, near Nobber, actually, and uh, famous for O'Carlin. Yes. But um, when we were all very young, she used to ride a horse, a horse, round the estate, and she had a heap of Alsatians with her, about forty or fifty of them. But my father kept some animals, and one of them was a sow. So the sow used to cross the road and into field across the road which belonged to this lady so she came riding down on a horse one day with all these lovely Alsatians behind her rode the horse nearly in the front door well that wasn't too hard because there was nearly no door on it <laughs> <laughs> on the house so that was the, la the lady on the horse see whereas come in to complain about the sow more or less yeah <laughs> that was it she the sow shouldn't have been there and rode the horse in. Rode the horse in. It was handier to ride the horse in to put back out the sow. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, uh, there's so many stories uh, in, in this group, Khan, and of course, the, the music is so storied as well, mm -hmm. Harry. I mean, Tara, of course, the ultimate centre of uh, all sorts of spiritual, mythical, historical things in, on the island. Of mm -hmm. Ireland and Meath itself, of course, was a it was a province, wasn't it? Uh, originally? Yeah, it was like the pro province in Irish is Quickades, which means fifth, and there's only four provinces now. But the fifth province was Meath, basically Meath, what's now County Meath and County West Meath. Yes, and it was the Middle Kingdom. Um, so yeah, um, it disappeared in the, in the Middle Ages, um, or just after the Middle Ages, it became four provinces. It was like a neutral province in the sense, a little bit like Washington, D.C., mm. not being uh, kind of in any... Uh, well, yeah, it was in a way, because it was where the High Kings were based. Mm -hmm. um, and actually, it was very interesting when Mary Robinson became president of Ireland, she mentioned this, uh, like the fifth province, as this kind of part of Ireland that was missing. Yes. And what she took it as a kind of a symbol for what could be the better part of ourselves in the future, you know? Yes, yes. Um, it was brilliant the way she used that idea in her inauguration speech, you know? Yes. And it was very interesting. It's uh, like a, a dream place almost. Almost, a, a, yeah. A, a utopian possibilities. Mm, absolutely, yeah. As well yeah. as the administrative centre of Ireland. Of course, that's right. Yeah. I'd love to talk a little bit about that in a minute or two. Uh, what about Stuck Stone? Mm. We wrote that tune commemorating the stone uh, just north of Slane, where three of us are actually living. And uh, the mythology behind the stone itself is that when uh, Finn McCool got a bit angry and he started throwing some stones around the country, uh, one of them happened to land on top of Schlieb Bra, which is the name of the hill. Now, the hill itself has fairy forts and ring forts on it, um, so it is quite an ancient site. But this stone was there and it's on all of the ancient maps and it's very specific it's called the stuck stone but it has disappeared we went up looking for it it ain't there anymore unfortunately yes. so we don't know where it is it's probably been 
it's on the roads or into stone walls. We've no idea, but it's yes. not there anymore. Yes. But that was the, the mythology about the stone. And it was there. I mean, the maps do tell us that. So. And in rhyme is, of course, what the stone we have in uh, Bob or Strammer, Clockmore. Clockmore, uh, yes. Yeah, he, Finn was in a, he he was threw in a, bad mood. a bit of a temper. <laughs> <He> uh, <was. laughs> We're going to have a listen to, uh, to this. It's a lovely piece uh, composed uh, by Cuscon called Stuck Stone. Stone. I like the alliteration and I like the music and uh, of course the story behind it. There's so many stories uh, coming from your part of the world. Uh, Harry, what about the, there's a tune I was thinking of, and a man I was thinking of, Murdoch the poet. Yeah, or Murdoch. Mur what is his name? Murdoch O'Dolly. He was from a famous family of poets in Ireland in the, the Middle Ages. Um, lived just after the Anglo-Norman invasion in the late 12th, early 13th century. Um, and he was from County Meath, uh, born in County Meath. And he did his training as a professional poet for seven years down in Cork. Um, then he became poet to the O'Connors in Sligo when he was What finished. did you have to do to become a poet in those days? Well, you had to go through this special training for seven years. and. Um, you know, involved some very s strict kind of procedures, like the poets had to lie in the dark um, in, in, uh, in, in a lot of cases and learn uh, by memory, you know, reams and reams of older poetry, you know, just to get it into their heads, you know. And was um, this kind of histor uh, these poems historical or...? Yeah, a lot of the, the poems would be historical and, um, I mean, the poets in those times, they were reckoned to have almost special powers, like, you know, um, like it was believed that if a poet didn't approve of a king's rule that he could he could uh, cause a blemish on the face of the king or mm. could be cause, cause the king to become ill, you know. And even after the Anglo-Norman invasion, there's actually an entry in the Annals of Connacht in the year 1414 that describes how the Lord, English Lord Justicier of Ireland died of a poet's spell, like, you know, <laughs> which is extraordinary, you know. <laughs> um, There's a shamanic nature almost. Yeah, yeah, definitely, yeah, mm -hmm. definitely, definitely. Um, it, they, yeah, the poets were very important and they were very high up. They were second only really to kings mm -hmm. in, you know, in the hierarchy that's, that you see portrayed in the Brehon laws, you know. They had a very high standing in society. 
tell, tell me more about this particular one. Well, this particular one, yeah. <laughs> um, when he was working for the O'Connors, um, the overlord of the area, who was uh, O'Donnell, um, sent a tax collector to collect taxes from, from this uh, poet. And um, he very much objected to this lowly man coming to collect taxes from him. So chopped his head off, uh, killed him. Um, this is all documented, like in the year 1213 this happened, and it's recorded in the Annals of the Four Masters. Um, and then there followed a whole series of incidents. He had to flee the area. Initially, he went to stay with the Burks of Clan Rickard, an Anglo-Norman family. Um, and O'Donnell's army hunted him out of there. Uh, he went to Limerick and stayed with the O'Briens of Tomond. Um, O'Donnell's army besieged Limerick City, so he had to flee from there as well. And in the end, the only way he could get any peace was to go to Scotland. So he fled to Scotland and founded a poetic family that lasted right into the early 19th century in Scotland. Did he meet St. Francis somewhere along the road? Well, there's a possibility that he did because um, at one stage when um, it was the Earl of Lennox uh, who was based near Dumbarton in Scotland when he died um, this man ended up going on crusade he was on the fifth crusade which was around um, Damietta at the, um, the delta of the Nile and uh, that same crusade was where the St Francis this famous incident took place where St Francis tried to talk to the Muslim leader, despite the fact that the Crusaders didn't want him to. Um, and we don't know for sure, but it, O'Dolly was on the same crusade, so he, yeah, he may well have met St. Francis. Yeah. Yeah. Too many things haven't <coughs> changed very much in terms of uh, conflicts and so on. No, no, and it's interesting, I saw there last year, um, the new Pope Francis um, actually said that the reason why he chose the name Francis was because uh, Francis was uh, such an extraordinary man of peace and because Francis had tried so hard to bridge the gap between different religions. You know, it's very interesting. Mm -hmm. So it almost goes right back to that story at Damietta when mm -hmm. Francis talked to the Muslim leaders despite the fact that the others didn't want him to. You know? Was it St. Francis who said, one should always preach the gospel but only speak when necessary? Mm -hmm. <laughs> very true. <laughs> <laughs> this is called Dark Liberty. Delta of the Nile 
in hell and horror, war and plague, such lives of wealth and style. A humble man fights fire and sword with understanding, peaceful words. Seven. Darkness found an inner sight Set my soul upon the sea To find and keep dark liberty There you heard Dark Liberty from Coscon. A very interesting piece of music, very, very beautiful indeed. Well, I, that was, uh, the song tells a story as well, or, or part of, the, of that amazing story of, of his life. Mm -hmm. What about these old stories? Uh, I suppose you could call it an Old Testament for, for Ireland in a way. Uh, these stories that have been handed down, uh, s I suppose, by the old storytellers and poets, and then the monks eventually wrote them down. When? Um, well, that was mostly in the, the um, early Christian period, mm. um, on into the Middle Ages. Like from from the time Christianity came to Ireland, I suppose, you know, in the the um, fifth century, um, writing basically came to Ireland with Christianity, and the monks were the the first people to spread writing around Ireland um, mm -hmm. and uh, so they began to write down all the the old legends mm -hmm. that had uh, come before that you know a lot of this was written in old Irish yeah isn't that right yeah and, and you're one of the few people that I know is familiar with old Irish rather than modern Irish mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. what are the periods of it is it um, well the old Irish would run from the earliest Times like the earliest texts are about the sixth, seventh century, and then you've got you know some Brown Law texts that are coming in in the eighth century. So it would be from that time up to I think around 1200, and then you get into what they call Middle Irish, um, which is uh, slightly different, but you know it's it's, it's still would still be um, understandable to someone who knew Old Irish, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and then you go on to Modern Irish, but this is Classical Irish as well, which is kind of you know. The um, learned language, I suppose, um, from from older times, you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We could spend hours on on that uh, particular mm. weeks, months uh, on that particular topic alone. Uh, of course, Slane was a, a famous meeting place of uh, the new religion of Saint Patrick and the old religion, mm. and uh, you've got a piece of music about this. Uh, the slain, the flame. flame of slain. Yeah. Who, who could t tell me about that? Uh, well, it's uh, in four parts, and uh, it was originally uh, written as a pageant piece, an entrance piece to a festival um, in Slane called the Flame of Slane, which celebrates the lighting of the Paschal fire, and um, it's always held around Easter time, obviously. But uh, the tune itself, as I said, is in four parts. The first part is Drake's and Deer is. Um, it's a mythical sound, and it sort of sends one back into time when uh, before religion, before we had an organised religion here, a religion that we know. Um, then it goes into uh, uh, Bealtaine's fire, which is the um, Celtic times. Um, the, you had a festival of fire at the beginning of May, um, and um, the idea was that uh, the first fire was to be lit on the hill of Tara, and then that spread out over the country. Um, but when St. Patrick came, he lit one before the king. And so the king got a bit angry, sent down St. Eric um, uh, with, the, with his army to go and find Paddy and bring him back to Tara. Um, and then the last piece is um, a fire dance, which is a modern take on uh, where we are today. So you have, you're going from very old to very new music all in the one piece. 
and that's what we're trying to encapsulate. It takes about seven minutes to do it, but I think we have You're it. You're lucky to get it done in seven minutes. <laughs> <laughs> the flame of slain from Cuscon. Well, in case you just joined us, uh, we have Cus Khan on the program tonight from Cody Mead, uh, of course, which uh, embraces Slain, Hill of Tara, the Boyne River. Uh, the Boyne River is a, a magical river too, and there's lots of very ancient stories associated with it, isn't mm -hmm. there? Where does, yeah. it, where does the name come from? Well. Um, Boand, who gave her name to the river, was a goddess, um, and uh, the story is told that um, she was wife of uh, the king of Leinster, and that um, this king of Leinster had a, a well, and uh, it was only himself and his special cup bearers that could go anywhere near the well. But she was fascinated to find out what the story was about this well. So um, she approached the well and um, looked down into it and the waters just rose up, blinded her and um, carried her all the way 
down the valley um, following the course. This is how the boyne actually formed and uh, all the way out to the sea she was swept out to sea um, and uh, yeah it's just it's basically the goddess and the river were one um, in the in the story you know um, so uh, and there's a lot of other stories about Bowand as well that relate to Newgrange and uh, lots of legends about her so um, yeah it's the whole area is is is, is full of steep a lot of these stories uh Facts and figures are not so important as truths, isn't it? Mm. Like, I suppose uh, people would dispute this, of course, but the Old Testament, you've got Samson who killed a thousand men with the jawbone of an ass. Mm. Maybe it wasn't a thousand men, maybe only 998, mm. but the, the truth in it mm. was he was a strong man. Mm. Yes. Mm. Uh, and uh, I suppose in many ways mythology is ahead of science in explaining the inexplicable in terms of stones been thrown, mm. glaciers created them. We people didn't know that then, but mm. a, a sun god defeating a, a nice god or something like that, mm. uh, leaving this in the past. Mm. It was all about finding explanations, wasn't it? Or yeah, I think narratives a, making yeah. things easier to understand. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. It was mm. the way people understood the world yeah. around them, I suppose. Mm -hmm. yeah, Explain yeah. the inexplicable. Yeah, yes, yes. Type yeah. Of thing, yeah, yeah. And you know, a lot of the rituals associated with the, the Celtic festivals, like David was talking about, Balchan and that, and the lighting of the fires, a lot of them are associated with agriculture and that as well. And you know, Newgrange, where the sun shines into the chamber just only around the time of the winter solstice, mm. you know, a lot of people reckon that was like being used as a calendar to kind of fix you know to fix the seasons of the year so mm -hmm. you know they could they could uh, understand and you know set their agricultural dates accordingly you know yes, yes. Um, so um, yeah a lot of it was tied in with everyday living really you know um, four wise and learned men here and uh, we're delighted to have them on the program <laughs> Jerry, maybe introduce uh, a piece for us. The reel around the sun and the Dowd reel. Uh, they are from the Newgrange area, sort of, and uh, it kind of the reel around the sun is kind of starts off. It's a slow piece, and then it builds up into the Dowd reel, kind of where kind of uh, kind of brings it all, you know, brings it good and, and strong. It kind of sets the whole thing on fire, sort of thing, if you can imagine mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. sort of the, the the Celtic sort of lore and feel into it. Yes, yes, yes. And uh, based along the Boyne there, you know, with Newgrange, you know. Yes. So it's kind of like one kind of uh, fits in with the other, the kind of kind of marry t together, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. Right. We're going to have the reel around the sun from Cusca.
right, Jerry? No, just the, f f apart from the music, uh, the, the the geology of the area of Slane is quite interesting because it's a kind of it's the start of where the old volcanic activity happened in Ireland with millions of years ago. From that back up to the north, mm. so it's kind of like from Slane down south. It's a completely different geology. It's kind of on a fault line. Mm. If you ever ran into the old uh, geological maps of Ireland or Done, I've done some research into that. I'm interested in geology and that sort of, st mm -hmm. sort of stuff. And mm -hmm. it's kind of it's kind of interesting that it's kind of right through Slane. You know, the yes. yeah. geological features are quite interesting too. You know, w were people upset when that motorway was uh, pushed through that area? Was that a, a well, that was that was the Tara. Tara mm -hmm. That is Tara. Yeah, Tara, Tara yeah. of course. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Sorry, but it's in the air, general in the Boyne Valley area. Yeah, yeah. 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 Was, was that a, a, a big issue? It was, was yeah. at the time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. The other issue in Slane is that um, um, it's on a, a major north-south route as well, and uh, to this day, people are still driving over an 800-year-old bridge. But that's it was meant for horses and carts, you know. But that's mm. the, the way things are. Yes. Yes. <coughs> anyway. Mm. Well, we're going to finish up uh, with the song about the County Don, and it's so good to, to, to have you here. And I know uh, uh, it's, it's a song that's dear to our hearts here, and many, many thanks for making the journey to the County Don. You're very welcome. And, and bringing your stories and your songs. And uh, I, I certainly enjoyed having Cuscon in the programme. I hope you did too. You could see these available. Um, yeah, we've got CDs available on our website, uh, which is Cuscon um, at uh, at Cuscon dot net. Cuscon dot net. Dot net. That's yeah. C O S C A F A D E N. No father yeah. on the computer. No, no father on the computer. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and may, maybe sometime Tommy will come down and visit us down there. You know. Well, I'd there's, love to. There's Boy one of our down. tunes we call the Cradle, and the reason we call it the Cradle is because there's a great archaeologist wrote a book called Treasures of the Boyne Valley. Peter Harbison, and in the book he, he said that that area around Newgrange, Stout, Nout, that that was the cradle of Irish civilization. There you so have you'll have to come to the cradle well, and visit us. Civilization. We're only scraping the surface of a very, very rich vein of uh, Irish history, mythology, spirituality, all these things. Many, many thanks. Thank you very all much. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. So sweet from her two bare feet to the shine of her nut brown hair. Such a coaxing I'm sure I shook myself for to see if I was really there. Come back to me of the dairy king, go with the double in town. No maid at the ceiling of her calling that I meant the county down. As she almost sped her scratch my head.
you want local Nuri and Morn TV shows on your television, which value box should you buy? Well, you have two options. Option one provides you as long as you have a good internet connection in your home with all the programs from DestinationNuri.com, including... Inside the fencing, when we're up there. That's such a change. And the, the dog muck. Destination Nuri. Hello, your weather for today and tomorrow with Destination Nuri Today. First, this is Nuri News Bite. Well, what's cracked in Nuri and Morn today? We all had a great September weather wise. We're going to go straight into this show with a lovely set of tunes from a band called Sun. Well, good morning. Uh, welcome to Destination Nuri. Tell me the provenance of that. Where did it come from? Right here, and welcome back to the studio. Um, good afternoon, and welcome along to Destination Wellbeing. My guest is that. Hi, everyone, and welcome to this week's Nuri's Loose Women with me. Well, it's hello, and welcome once again to the program. My name is Colin Sands. And the pulse of the house of our God. Praise to Lord. Philip Rogan, brother, wearing number 19. Evening, everybody, and you're very welcome to Nuri Showgrounds tonight again. So that's option one, and to choose this, click on option one below, or you can go to value.ie and buy option one. Option two provides you as long as you have a good internet connection in your home. Everything you get for option one, including all the programs from destinationnuri.com, plus you will be able to add over 1,000 private or public channels at the touch of a button, most of which are free. So that's option two. To buy, click below and buy option two, or go to vario.ie and buy option two. To choose your option, either option one or two, just click on the buttons below or you can go to vario.ie and click on option one or two. When we receive your payment, we will deliver your box to your home and all you need to do is plug it in and connect it to your TV and your internet. Any problems? We're here on standby to help. <laughs> <laughs> 